Hello everyone and welcome back. This is my WWF No Mercy Let's Play video series. I am Be Better Gamer. And if you're joining me for the first time, I, um, I'm currently in the process of 100%ing the European Championship path. And today I'm going to be playing as uh, D'Lo Brown. Now, you're going to see a little bit of insight as to how I go about these um, Let's Plays. Or, or at least making these videos for these Let's Plays. Um, I was very interested to see if I was if I wanted to do like a costume change for D'Lo Brown but at the same time also the black levels really bother me in um, No Mercy they always did even back then um, so I get kind of OCD so I know I was gonna play as D'Lo Brown and I know he wears you know the black tank top and the black pants and the black boots uh, and, and they just don't look right like if you look at the the tank top uh, the, the black level then you look at the pants and then you look at the boots like none of the blacks look right they, they all look different and it's, it's very it bothers me I don't know why <laughs> but it just does and you're gonna see even after this match I go ahead and I do something I, I, I fix Eddie Guerrero's um, elbow pads and stuff I fix the blacks on those because those were bothering me too and I did the whole Eddie Guerrero run uh, I just uploaded before this video I uploaded my Eddie Guerrero European Championship run please check that out this is technically part um, what is it 8 right yeah because I have two more yeah so this is technically part 8 in my road to completing the European Championship um, I'm gonna do a bonus European Championship path video, and I'm also gonna change up the format as how I um, label my YouTube videos. I'm gonna just make all my No Mercy videos episodic, and you know, mention if it's a hundred percent path. But I think it, that's also just gonna free me up to do other episodes because I was thinking about well, I want to do this bonus uh, William Regal European title run. Uh, I just I just revealed it <laughs> um, but it's not part of the hundred percent path but it's just an opportunity so I can create a William Regal character and then also do a title run with him so uh, I'm gonna change the episodic format but this is technically part eight of a ten part for the European title I'm playing it on hard and again if this is the first time you're joining me uh, please watch my other videos please like comment and survive uh, subscribe it's very it's very uh, it motivates me a lot I mean I mean it, this is fun this is fun for me and I definitely have like hundreds of videos I want to do about these games not just no mercy but all the other um, AKI developed wrestling games um, like WrestleMania 2000 revenge virtual Pro wrestling to yada 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 uh, um, I don't want to list all of them but um, when I see people leave comments and you know retweet me on Twitter or you know put suggestions or anything it just it inspires me and it lets me know that people are watching and and that kind of motivates me to try to get them out as soon as possible so you know thank you for that thanks again I want to be able to take some time out every now and then to thank everyone who's watching um, yeah and anyway I'm doing D'Lo Brown now D'Lo Brown this is going to be a fun episode because D'Lo Brown actually, he peaked. He peaked. Let's let's be honest. He peaked when he had the European title. Or when he had uh, each time he held the European title. D'Lo Brown is a four-time, 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 four-time uh, European title holder. I love playing as D'Lo Brown in the games because he actually has a really good moveset in the games. And D'Lo Brown... He was a good wrestler, um, not to write home about, in my opinion. I mean, he, he was he was he was serviceable, um, but I I feel like he really did peak after the whole he, during the Nation of Domination um, when he was um, you know at first it was led by Farouk, but but when, when The Rock took over and D. LeBron won the European title and then he would win it several times after that. Um, that was the highlight of his WWE career. After that, he kind of, you know, did nothing. And it's going to be very interesting because you're going to see, you know, he won. He first won the title in 98. And the last time he would win it would be in uh, 99. So he, right before uh, No Mercy came out. So during WrestleMania 2000, he was, you know, the European champion. But 
recipe into uh, during No Mercy and the time from November '99 to uh, November 2000 when No Mercy was released, um, D'Lo Brown wasn't doing really much of anything in the WWE. Um, but his his European title run is very significant. Like I said, four-time European champion that ties him with William Regal for European champion uh, for the most times as champion, I should say. Very interesting. So him and William Regal four times. No one ever held the European title for three times. It was only you held it once, you held it twice, or in William Regal and D'Lo Brown's case, you held it four times. So I think that's very interesting that no one held it three times. I don't know. I thought that was neat. Um, he's also the first Euro Continental champion. I've mentioned this in the past. It's the, It was a term given to someone who had both the IC title and the European title at the same time. And D'Lo Brown was the first. So that's really cool. I got my special as D'Lo Brown right now. Um, going to try to put away Eddie Guerrero with the... Uh, uh, what did he call this? The low down splash? No, his his five his frog splash was the low down. This was the sky high. That's right. I almost forgot. He called it the sky high. Dilo Brown had a pretty cool move set in this game and in WrestleMania 2000. Um, but you know, my you know he wasn't the innovator of these moves by you know by any means. But they were really cool wrestling moves. I mean, the sky high is a great wrestling move. He used to do the running liger bomb, which we'll talk about the significance of that in a bit. Uh, you know, I love the running Liger Bomb. Uh, he did uh, his own variation of the Frog Splash, which he called the Low Down, where he basically uh, put his hands between his legs, and then, you know, uh, just the way he did it was different. He would bring his hands all the way through under his legs, as opposed to where a lot of people just, you know, brought their kind of like their elbows and their knees in. But Dito Brown would kind of do like sort of like a split jump in the air almost. Uh, here I go fixing the black levels of Eddie Guerrero's elbow pads because, you know, my OCD is getting to me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I have to be, at, you know, I had to be Eddie Guerrero because I am doing a championship run um, as champion. So this one's going to be not as long as the Eddie Guerrero one because this one, um, I have to lose the first match. And then Shane McMahon's going to be like, yo, I saw you lost. So you want to team up with me? And I'm going to be like, yeah, totally. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then the rest of the storyline is going to be uh, working for Shane McMahon, beating people up. And then I have to let Shane McMahon win a match later on. So there's some decisions you have to make uh, for this European title run. And that's going to influence the different paths you take. Um, again, I, I always put the link to the fact the game FAQ I use down on the bottom. So go ahead and check that out. But basically, that's why this is going to be a little bit of a shorter run. Don't ha and, and, and also the matches don't go as long as the Eddie Guerrero matches. Um, and you'll see why. But, um, yeah, so he, he first won, D'Lo Brown first won the title on an episode of Raw, which aired on July 20th, 1998. He defeated Triple H, um, and uh, D'Lo was part of the nation, and The Rock came to the ring with him, and The Rock was the IC champ at the time. And D'Lo Brown, just to put it in perspective, in 1998, July 1998, D'Lo Brown was the fifth person to ever hold the European uh, title. You know, let's not forget that the European title was only established in '97, and um, you know it didn't it didn't last too long after that. It was retired in 2002, which was like pretty much like almost two years after No Mercy came out, or less than two years. You know, um, so Dio Brown was the fifth um, holder of the European title, and and probably the first significant holder of the title because he would hold it so many times. His total days as champion is only 140, though. So that only puts him as third for total days as champion. Um, there I go, hitting a Liga bomb right off the bat on Kane. You know, I'm supposed to lose this match, and I thought he would counter it. And it's like, nope, he took that one. So <laughs> that was very interesting. Uh, it's hard. <clears throat> I always say, you know, you got to go out there and try to um, do strong grapples so that the computer could counter you and then hopefully counter it into a pin. But... Um, with Dilo Brown, it's, gonna, it, it, it's tougher because a lot of his moves are a little bit more heavyweight based, and also Kane's a heavyweight. His, his rehearse, reversal is going to be heavyweight, so he's not going to like counter from a power bomb into a Huracan pin. So I just got to go in there and just do strong grapples. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> 
excuse me. Um, I gotta go in there, do strong grapples, and hopefully uh, he'll just counter them enough to get his own special meter up, and then he can go ahead and put me away with the uh, Tombstone Pile Driver. And again, if you want to lose a match and you're getting pinned, just hold a control stick and you won't kick out. A little secret. Not really a secret. I'm sure a lot of people know about it, and I've mentioned it a dozen times already. But you can also stay in submission holds that's that way too. I go for a Sambo suplex. The other round's got a Sambo suplex. He's got so many cool moves. It's, it's you know it's interesting. Like he's got so many cool moves. A lot of his moves that he has are moves that I would give my own creative wrestler when I used to have a creative wrestler back in this day. And the, I used to do the low down because I love the frog splash and I like that variation of the frog splash. So that was my like top rope go to finishing move. I used to do the running Liger Bomb. I used to do the regular sit-out Liger Bomb because I'm a big fan for Liger. Um, yeah, for a brief moment, I had the Sky High. I think I remember in WrestleMania 2000, one of the first specials I used was the Sky High. And then I changed it. Um, so, yeah, cool moveset. Here I go, getting tombstoned by D'Lo Brown. Now, this is actually very reflective of what probably would happen a lot. In his circa 2000, D'Lo Brown just getting tombstoned by uh, Kane. But he was on fire, man. He defeated Triple H, uh, won the European title, but then he would lose it to X-Pac on an episode of Raw, which aired uh, September 21st, 1998. So his first reign was his longest reign. He held it for 63 days. Uh, but then he would get the title back from X-Pac 14 days later and uh, would, on an episode of Raw, which aired on October 5th. And then he would... Uh, hold the title for 19 days before losing it to X-Pac at Judgment Day in your house. I did a X-Pac European title run where I also talk about this briefly. Go check out that X-Pac European title run. And hey, while you're at it, go check out the X-Pac light heavyweight title run. Triple H, I mentioned him, you know, DX, X-Pac, all these guys, DX. Uh, Triple H is actually going to be the next guy I do for the European title, so that should be fun. Do, do a little throwback outfit for um, Triple H and see there I go I already um, accepted the terms of my deal with the devil if you will now this is interesting because Shane McMahon actually factors into the next part of the European legacy so Shane McMahon would beat X-Pac after X-Pac beat D'Lo Brown him and X-Pac would have a feud Shane McMahon would win and then Shane McMahon would retire he beat him at uh, I forgot where he beat him at but he, he would retire um, as the European champion right then a few months later, all of a sudden he's you know with Midian for no like and and then he he checks his duffel bag and he's like oh I still have that European title here you go Midian why don't you take it and that my friends is the finger poke of doom for the European title in a way <laughs> I mean I mean that right there was just the clear indication that you know. At first they had this European title and it was cool, they had another title in, in the organization and then Shane gets it and then they don't, you know, they retire it because Shane's not going to actively defend it every week or whatever and then he just gives it to Midian because it was in his duffel bag. Whenever a title is just given, that's not a good sign and actually that would happen a few times during uh, D'Lo Brown's uh, quest to to go after it so D'Lo Brown was adamant about getting a title about winning a title that people were just having it given <laughs> to them so I put a little chip on his shoulder I bet <laughs> but he would beat um, D'Lo Brown would face Midian at fully loaded 99 um, and he would beat him because it's Midian let's be honest Midian the jobber of the corporation Midian's not in no mercy Midian is in um, WrestleMania 2000, but you can actually make a perfect Midian in this game if you want to. I actually might do that. There's a few characters and a few wrestlers in this game that are in WrestleMania 2000, and I'll be talking about a few of them in, in this in this episode. But you can make them perfectly, um, because they'll have they have all their outfits and they also have like their pictures and their you know, so that's pretty cool. But um. The significance about the Midian match, at least the significance for me personally, is that it was uh, held in Buffalo uh, back in 99. You know, fully noted 99 was over in Buff here in Buffalo. And I say here because that's where I live now. I'm originally from Brooklyn. And I moved to Buffalo a few years ago. And also the pay-per-view was on July 25th, 99. Double significance because that's my birthday, July 25th. So I just thought it was interesting that... 
D'Lo Brown. I'm doing I'm doing an episode on D'Lo Brown winning the European title, and one of the times he won it was in Buffalo, uh, when it probably wasn't even on my radar back in '99, and on my birthday. Pretty significant, right? Um, so I gotta redo this match for because I didn't realize I had to hit Kane a bunch of times with a weapon. <laughs> so there I was beating Kane, and then I was like, oh crap, wait a minute. I was supposed to hit him a bunch of times, wasn't I? <laughs> so I had to do the match over again. Uh, that happens. Yeah, at least I didn't ha have to do it over again because I lost, you know? That would have been embarrassing. Me and Boss Man can't d take down Kane. Boss Man, they have his original, they have his, they have his old Boss Man gimmick uh, where he wore like the blue and yellow police attire. They have that in No Mercy. I think I might do a video far down the line. I mean, it's not really important, but I'll probably do a Boss Man video where I put his old outfit on. Do a few matches. Uh, maybe have him wrestle the Mountie. Maybe I'll create the Mountie and have him wrestle the Mountie. <laughs> no, I won't do that. But, uh, oh no, who knows? Maybe. I don't know. Um, so anyway. So yeah, he won the title in Buffalo. Fully loaded. 99. On my birthday. Many years ago. Then the next night on Raw, he would beat Jeff Jarrett for the Intercontinental title. Now, that made him the first Eurocontinental uh, champion. Like I mentioned earlier, and it actually aired on August 2nd, because uh, Raw used to be, it, it was never, it, it used to be um, not live, it used to be taped, but, um, so this was during the taped era, and Mark, um, Mark Henry, D'Lo Brown and Jeff Jarrett would feud going into SummerSlam 99, and D'Lo Brown would lose that match because Mark Henry uh, with D -Lo, you know, him and D'Lo Brown were a tag team. They were with the Nation. Then they left the Nation together, and um, but now Mark Henry would betray him, which Mark Henry still does to this day. Don't befriend Mark Henry; he'll probably betray you. <laughs> um, and that caused D'Lo Brown to lose both his European title and his Intercontinental title on the same night. So. Um, D'Lo Brown won both titles separately, but then both titles were put on the on line against Jeff Jarrett, and Jeff Jarrett became the second Eurocontinental champion. And you'd think they would have just merged the championships after this, but no, they didn't. Because the next night on Raw, uh, Jeff Jarrett would give the European title to Mark Henry. Now, I understand sometimes titles are used as props you know what I mean they're used to advance the story and sometimes that takes precedent over the legacy of a title or what it means to be a champion but come on with it when you're giving the title away you know twice in in the course of like two months I, I think it says something like yeah maybe we should just unify the titles <laughs> but nope they were just like, eh, we'll just give it to Mark Henry. We gave it to Midian, now we're giving it to Mark Henry. And then, of course, and then what happens? If you're given a title, you know what's going to happen? D'Lo Brown's going to come and beat you for it. Because <laughs> that's exactly what happens. D'Lo Brown um, would get the title one last time. Uh, he would beat Mark Henry at Unforgiven, 99. And then he would lose the title to the British Bulldog on October 28th. So almost a month later, on an episode of SmackDown. Now, shortly before that episode of SmackDown, on October 5th, it was supposed to be a taping of SmackDown. Um, Dilo Brown took on the Dra Draws, Darren Drawsdorf, and that is where he infamously went for the running Liger bomb, which is basically a running sit-out power bomb. And he, you know, they, he messed up. And when he, when Draws came down, he broke his neck. He, he broke, he paralyzed Draws, and it was a complete accident, you know, as both parties would, would still say today. Um, but that left Draws paralyzed and ended his career. Um, and it's a shame to always hear about that. The match was never actually aired, I believe. Um, I think they edited it out of SmackDown because, again, SmackDown wasn't live. So, but that's, you know, a pretty significant moment to happen right before. Uh, and then a few weeks later, you know, D'Lo Brown would drop the title to the British Bulldog. And, and then after that, it just was never the same for D'Lo Brown. 
And you gotta think that maybe his injuring draws had something to do with it. I mean, it definitely wasn't on purpose. I mean, AJ Styles has broken several wrestlers' necks in the past few years. Um, most recently, Yoshitatsu. Not on purpose. Uh, but AJ Styles is on top of the world. You know, he's the New Japan champion. But D'Lo Brown, it was, I don't know. D'Lo Brown, after, it seemed like he was having so much momentum, having so, all these good feuds, one after the other. Eurocontinental title. He injures draws. He loses the title to the Bulldog. And then, that's it. Disappears. So, yeah. I, I, not disappears, but you know doesn't do much you know and i'll get into that in a little bit but like you know you look at his time as champion so he you know so he won the title um at fully loaded you know he he beat xbox in a non-title match but he was the champion and then you have the SummerSlam 98 pay-per-view where he was the champion he beat val venus um then he lost in your house judgment day then at fully loaded he beat midian SummerSlam, he loses to jared unforgiven he beats mark henry and then rebellion him and Jarrett have a rematch, but they flip a coin to um, see what title gets put on the line. So this is uh, Rebellion, October second, nineteen ninety nine, um, and then and Jeff Jarrett I think loses a coin toss, and then his IC title's on the line, but he still wins the match anyway. And then on No Mercy ninety nine, which was actually October seventeenth, ninety nine. So again, let's take that into context. So. Um, WrestleMania 2000 comes out October 31st, 1999. Uh, D'Lo Brown injures draws on October 5th. October 17th, the No Mercy pay-per-view, the 1999 pay-per-view. D'Lo Brown's not on it, but he's still the European champion. And then um, we get to uh, October 28th, episode of SmackDown. British Bulldog beats D'Lo Brown for the title. And that's the last time D'Lo Brown would have the European title. And then, you know, he didn't hold any other titles after that either. Uh, his IC title reign was only that one reign when he held both. So, yeah, it's, it's just interesting how that all pans out. So, that catapults us, I guess, directly into the year in review. So, what happened from November 99 to November 2000? And, you know, for the people who have joined me in the past... Uh, but, uh, you know, I always like to say it so people know, you know, why I focus on what I talk about, you know, the, I like to focus on the context of, you know, what was going on from November 99 to November 2000, because that's when the, you know, No Mercy was most likely being developed at its fullest, and then it would get released in November of 2000, so... You know, Survivor Series 99, D'Lo Brown and the Godfather are now back together, and the Godfather was with D'Lo Brown during The Nation. Uh, D'Lo Brown split with Mark Henry from The Nation, but now that Mark Henry had turned on him, now D'Lo Brown's rolling back with the Godfather. And him and the Godfather team up with the Headbangers, and they would take on the Dudleys, who I just beat in a tag team match with Shane McMahon, <laughs> and the Acolytes. Uh, and they would win. They would win that match. Which, you know, surprising. But they would. Armageddon, December 99. Uh, triple threat match for the European title. British Bulldogs still the champion. Dila Brown wants it back. Val Venus is in the title picture. All of a sudden. And actually, uh, Val Venus would come away with the title. So, British Bulldog would lose it. Dila Brown would lose his chance to get it back. Become a fifth time champion. And Val Venus would win it. Spurring me to create a uh, Val Venus European Championship video, which uh, you can watch in my European Championship playlist. <laughs> Fifteen years later, obviously, that's it spurred me to do it. Not at the moment when that match happened back then. I wasn't like I'm gonna make a YouTube channel and do uh, do a video about Val Venus being the European Champion. <laughs> um, Royal Rumble 2000. Dila Brown was number one in the Rumble. Which could be a kiss of death or the best thing ever, depending on who you are. But obviously, D. LeBrown did not win that year. It wasn't his year. He got eliminated by Rikishi uh, a little bit later on. Uh, no Way Out, February 2000. D. LeBrown was not on the pay-per-view. Oh, and I guess I should say, I haven't said it in a while, but I guess I, I should say, I, I, I go by the pay-per-views because, you know, they meant a lot back then. You know, every week led up to the pay-per-view. If something happened on a Raw SmackDown of significance, I would talk about it. I mean, not to say, like, the Raws and SmackDowns weren't significant. 
I mean, if we're being honest, they were much better than they are today. But, you know, the the, the, the pay-per-views is where the big things usually happen or the big moments. It's also easier. You know, I'm not going to go week by week what happens with these guys. So it's easier to do it by the pay-per-views. Also, you can watch the pay-per-views on the WWE Network. $9.99, you know the song and dance. And if you've heard my videos before, you know I love it. I talk about it all the time. Um... In the last episode, I went on another little rant where I talked about why you should watch it as just a wrestling fan. But when I was uh, doing some research again, you know, for D'Lo Brown, you know, there's just also a lot of stuff that brings to light, you know, things they have to fix. And I thought of an idea. I thought it would be kind of neat. So, like, you know how with Spotify, if you have Spotify, you can create your own playlists and then you can share them with people. I think that would be pretty cool to do. And honestly, if they, they had that feature, I mean, I could do that with these videos. I could put like little links to my own custom playlist like, oh, here are the D'Lo Brown matches you should watch uh, as the European champion instead of, you know, um, just, well, at least to go along with my recommendations while I do these videos. I mean, oh man, I could have created a great Eddie Guerrero playlist and share that, you know, my personal favorite Eddie Guerrero matches or you know his ma his time as European champion or here's here's Eddie Guerrero's best matches as IC champion or you know stuff like that you know so it would be a nice little companion to I to add on I've thought about maybe creating YouTube playlists that I can um, put along with these videos for some of these wrestlers but you know the quality of the YouTube videos are hit or miss sometimes when it comes to the wrestling um, you know old raws or smackdowns or whatever um, sometimes you'll get the match and then they'll be dubbed over with like rock music or something like that. Uh, sometimes the quality will just be terrible. Sometimes the audio will be way too loud. So that's why it's cool that I just do the paper. I think that I do do the pay per views, and I just you know you can always just go to the WWE Network for reference, and I'll and I'll let you know what each pay per view is and um, how to find it on the WWE Network if it's not a pay per view. But I really wish they had like some sort of. Um, playlist feature that you can create your own playlist and that you could share them maybe that'll be something they integrate soon I mean it's only been out a year so we can't be too hard on it you know it took a while for you know a lot of the other services I use it's, I, it took them a while to really hit their stride I mean Netflix is like mandatory these days but you know I was real look at that running Liger Bomb through the table you gotta love that oh he kicks out Bubble Ray, he's tough, man. Kicks out of a running Liger Bomb. I still taunt because I'm the real deal. <laughs> I love that taunt, too. Dilo Brown's fun to play as. I'll give him that. Um, but, yeah, like, what was I going to say? Real quick, because this is a tangent that doesn't really um, focus on wrestling, but it matters in the sense that I'm talking about the network. Uh, I had Netflix back in the day when it was just a disc, you know, when it was just the DVDs. And now it's grown into this great online streaming service, but... In the early days of the streaming service, obviously it didn't have as much as it has now. And you were very limited in what you could do. Like, I mean, they just introduced profiles. Like, you create your own profile. So, like, if you are sharing a Netflix account with someone, you each could share your, um, you know, you could share your account but create different profiles so that, you know, your recommendations doesn't get mixed up with their recommendations. You know, if my daughter is binge watching My Little Pony, all of a sudden when I want to watch Breaking Bad, it was like, hey, maybe you should check out the next episode of My uh, My Little Pony too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like it, it keeps that stuff out of my feed. Uh, I would like to see that with the network too. You know, like recommendations, like hey, you really like. I I notice you look a lot up a lot of uh, Eddie Guerrero matches. Well, maybe you should check out Eddie Guerrero versus. You know, Rey Mysterio Jr. and Halloween Havoc. And it's like, well, I've seen that match already. But yeah, you know what? I'll watch it again. You know? <laughs> or like, hey, you've been uh, watching a lot of D'Lo Brown lately. Why don't you watch him and The Nation? You know, why don't you watch, like, The Nation versus DX at this pay-per-view or whatever? Um, that would be kind of cool. So, yeah. Just, again, WWE Network is not perfect, but it helps. It's a great resource. And, um, yeah, if you want to check out any of these matches. I mean, the D'Lo Brown matches... Definitely, I would say watch his Euro Continental match, you know, against Jeff Jarrett for the significance. His X-Pac matches were actually pretty good. Uh, his, his match with, um, you know, Mark Henry is what it is. Yeah, like, you know, he definitely peaked around that time. But again, his matches weren't anything to, like, you know, 
didn't really, at least even back then, like, didn't really move me and shake me to say, oh, Dee Brown's going to be the next big thing. I always just wanted to see where they would go with him. And unfortunately, as we're about to find out, uh, they didn't go much of anywhere because he no-showed no way out. He wasn't there. WrestleMania 2000, him and the Godfather come out. You know, it's the first match, tag team match, him against uh, Big Boss Man and Bill, Bill Buchanan. And, um, you know, Ice-T came out. They had a big, long hoe train. And then they lost the match. So, you know, it was weird, I thought. Because um, they have this whole big grand entrance just to lose the match. <laughs> um, Backlash, April uh, 29th, 2000. Dila Brown beat Al Snow in a singles match. But this actually wasn't on Backlash. This was a Sunday Night Heat taping. Insurrection, 2000. He wasn't on it. Judgment Day, Day May 21st, 2000. Godfather, D'Lo Brown, already splitting up. And um, they fought. But it, again, it was a Sunday Night Heat taping. It wasn't on the Judgment Day pay-per-view. King of the Ring, you guessed it. Sunday Night Heat taping. Now D'Lo Brown, briefly teaming with Perry Saturn, um, took on the Acolytes, and they lost. So, I mean, that's a good indication, indication that they don't know what to do with a wrestler when they just start putting him in tag teams. You know, he was with Mark Henry, and he was with The Godfather, and then all of a sudden, randomly, he's with Perry Saturn, and then going forward, he's going to start teaming with Chaz, and they're going to call themselves Lowdown, which, I don't get it. I never got it. I mean, they weren't a significant tag team by any means, but, I mean, that was the name of his special, was Lowdown, and now the team is called Lowdown. Like, what does Chaz have to do with that? I get the D-Low, you know, Low, D-Low, Brown. Okay, Chaz, well, he's down. What, is he the down? If D'Lo Brown is low, was Chaz the down? Was it because Chaz was just down to be in a tag team because he didn't have Thrasher or whatever? Or was he Mosh? I forget. You know, he was one of the headbangers, I know that. Um, but, um, yeah, like, so, he uh, he teams with Low Down. They lose to the Dudley Boys in a Sunday Night Heat taping. SummerSlam, not on it, not even a Sunday Night Heat same thing as uh, for Unforgiven, No Mercy 2000, the pay-per-view, which this game is named after. Dudley Boys had a uh, Dudley Boys Invitational uh, Tables Tag Match where they would invite teams to do like a elimination style uh, tables match, which I just put Devon through a table. Let's see if he kicks out like Bubba. Nope. Ha! So in the game, D'Lo wins the tables match, but... In the uh, real life, they lost. They were actually, they were first in that match. And this was a Sunday Night Heat taping, too. This wasn't even on the No Mercy pay-per-view. I should put that in there. Um, D'Lo Brown and Chaz, they were first to be eliminated. They got eliminated by Too Cool. Come on, you got eliminated by Too Cool in the tables match. And then Taz and Raven came in. They eliminated Too Cool because, come on, they're not going to get eliminated by Too Cool. Dudley's come in. They eliminate Taz and Raven. And then... Right to center comes in, and then Dudley Boys eliminate them. Survivor Series 2000. Here we are. We're at the end of it, and Dila Brown's not on the pay-per-view. So, <laughs> so Dila Brown's year in review is not exciting. Again, I, I think looking back on it, maybe they were just waiting to see what was going to happen with the whole draws thing. Because, you know, a wrestler could break, break their neck, this and that, and, and there could still be hope. I mean, Stone Cold had his neck broken. Shoot, even X-Pac had his neck broken like multiple times. Benoit had his neck broken. Most recently, Daniel Bryan came back from a neck injury. I don't think his neck was actually broken, but did come back from a neck injury, a serious neck injury. Um, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that a guy come back could come back from a serious neck injury, but he really messed up draws pretty bad. And they've both talked about it since. And D'Lo Brown said that uh, in an interview... He said that it made him question everything he did in the ring after that. It shook it shook up his confidence pretty much. And really when you're when you're when your confidence is shaken as a wrestler, um, it translates to your work in the ring. You know, people can see that. People can see a wrestler who isn't confident in let's say their gimmick or their moves or you know when they sell a move or when they do a move. Like you can see that. And and, and I think that was one of like the striking things about the attitude era is that 
There was a lot of confidence, a lot of swagger in that locker room. All those guys, when they came out, they meant business. And and you really do. You look back. You look back at D'Lo Brown when he was with the Nation. He had confidence. He had swagger. I mean, one of the coolest things was when he had the European title. He put on his tights, you know, European and then champion on the other side. Like, in big, bold letters, they ran across his leg. Like, he he was proud to be the European champion. He really took ownership of it. And, yeah, it was being, you know, thrown around a bit. But, you know, Dilo Brown and, like, a lot of the other guys in that locker room, they, they were at war in a way, They were, you know, in a sense, with WCW, with trying to get the ratings up and, and trying to go out there and, and give the best possible show they can and then when you go in there and you hurt someone who's most likely a friend or at least even just a fellow you know co-worker in this case you know a fellow wrestler um that's obviously gonna leave us leave a sting owen hart talked about it too a little bit before he passed um and and the relationship between owen hart and steve austin when owen hart accidentally broke his neck it wasn't it was never the same and, and and Austin's talked about it, um, but you know that definitely shook up Owen Hart a little bit. Um, even a guy like him, Owen Hart, who was such a professional in the ring, you know, accidents happen. It's unfortunate that D'Lo Brown had that happen in his career because if you look at the timing of it, right after that, you know, the the title he lost the title to the Bulldog and then just did nothing, pretty much. Um, after Survivor Series 2000, D'Lo Brown, D'Lo Brown had a brief stint, which almost seemed like he was going to be revitalized when Teddy Long was managing him on SmackDown, and he was kind of being a one-man revival of, um, the nation almost, you know, but it was a little bit different context, but D'Lo Brown got released in 2003, so he didn't, he didn't last much longer in the WWE. His time was gone, and, you know, that happens. That happens sometimes. But, needless to say, one of the things I remember most about the European Championship, when I think about it, is D'Lo Brown's runs with the title. Uh, I mean, when you win it four times, it's hard not to forget about it. You know what I mean? So, you got that. You got He had a really cool frog splash. He did the running Liger Bomb, which not a lot of people do. And, you know, Jushin Thunder Liger, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I don't think he ever broke anyone's neck doing the Liger Bomb. It just it just happens, you know? Um, actually, I think I saw... No, who does the Liger Bomb now? Doesn't Seth Rollins do the running Liger Bomb? I think Seth Rollins did the running Liger Bomb the other day. Or not the other day, but on a match recently. He did a running sit-out um uh, Liger Bomb, which was cool. It was him or someone else. I don't know. I should have wrote it down who did it. I know I saw it recently in a match, and I was surprised because I haven't seen it in a long time. In um, WCW NWO Revenge, Ultimo Dragon has the running Liger Bomb as his finisher, which is cool. Uh, and he would do that too sometimes in WCW, especially to like guys like Rey Mysterio, who he could just like do that too. There I go with the quick, dirty, fast count, D'Lo Brown. I mean, that's the cool thing about the... Um, referee matches if you are a referee in the game which I have to do for this match um, you can end them quickly cuz uh, you know you can still attack the guy obviously uh, there's gonna be no dis disqualification cuz you're the ref <laughs> but there's not even really an option to call for DQ I think if you're attacking um, and you can just go for the fast count which is really cool and it's also really fun to be to do a um, a guest referee match with friends because then you could be like you know the jerk friend who does the slow count <laughs> for every for every match actually in the, um, in in uh, virtual pro wrestling 2 you can choose your referees um, they have like three different referees you can choose from and one of the referees is this old legendary referee I forgot his name but his count is really slow so it's cool to pick him sometimes because then it makes the stakes of the match a little bit higher because it's like, oh man, this is a really slow three count. 
and it's really funny. And I think they took that idea from Fire Pro Wrestling, because Fire Pro Wrestling had the different referees, and they had the same referee, and he did a slow count every time. It was a play on like that guy's age, you know, he was just an old referee, so his counts were slow. But I think that was really cool. I wanted to see that brought back into No Mercy, but again, it was one of the many features that were left out. Um, they really need to do a modern you know no mercy game and when i mean a modern no mercy game i know there's modern wrestling games but with this engine um because this engine just uh I, I don't play the modern wrestling games because they're just not as fun as this engine like i can still fire up these these wrestling games and play them for hours because the engine is just so much fun to play but there was a lot of little neat fi features like that like you know a slow count ref that you can pick um or maybe a ref that like you know, maybe if DQ is on, and you go for the DQ, maybe a ref who like always like misses it, you know, like or whatever. I don't know. They could have done silly stuff with the ref. But uh, here I am in a handicap match with D'Lo Brown uh, against X Pac and Road Dog, which is kind of fitting because of the history with the Nation and the DX feud. That Nation DX feud was hot, man. It was it was on fire. Like it, it got huge responses from the crowd. It was intense. Uh, I, I think the funniest moment was when DX came out and um, they impersonated each member of the uh, of, <laughs> of the nation and the, and the, I forgot I forgot who but one of them was in blackface which like you're looking at it today and a party was like oh you guys actually did an angle where you used blackface come on guys but at the same time you know it's wrestling sometimes stuff like that you can't get too offended by it because it's so silly to begin with you know um so i i still look at it and just laugh at it these days because it was actually really funny like you know with the rock like he had the triple h had the big sideburns and and the and the jerry curl hair and all that stuff it was it was hysterical but um yeah d -Lo brown uh, I, I know he did some stuff in, in like All Japan and like Pro Wrestling Noah and briefly he appeared in TNA in the beginning, Impact Wrestling. Um, he was in ROH briefly, but I don't think he's doing much of anything now these days. Um, yeah, I, I really, I really wonder what would have happened if he had never injured Draws. Like, did that have something that did guys not maybe want to work with him anymore? You know, that, 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 that's an issue sometimes, too. I mean, most recently, CM Punk, you know, he had his uh, little podcast with Colt Cabana where he talked about he didn't like working with Ryback because Ryback kept, kept hurting him. And he would get pissed off because he would say, I don't want to work with Ryback. He's going to hurt me. No, no, he's not going to hurt you. And then they would get in the match and Ryback would, would hurt him. Um, that was big. That was big. Um, that's still big in wrestling because, especially if you're a top guy, um, you don't want to work with someone who's gonna hurt you. So here's D'Lo Brown. You know he's coming off. He, he's a European champion. Obviously, they keep putting him in these really hot angles where he's got a lot of momentum. He injures a guy like Draws, who isn't a top guy, but it makes you wonder. It's like if they approached, like maybe they wanted to work an angle. Uh, a few months down the line with D'Lo Brown and The Rock and The Rock's like mm. or maybe they're like I don't know if we should put D'Lo Brown in with The Rock because he might hurt The Rock or you know it might have something to do with that you know it might it might have something to do with that I mean D'Lo Brown's angle where he was with Teddy Long he was definitely talking about how he's he's wants to make his voice heard because he feels like you know the African-American athlete gets held back a lot in wrestling Maybe that it had a lot of real life implications. I mean, I know there's definitely been a lot of stories and you know factual you know accounts of wrestlers being held back because of their race, not just if they were black, but if they were Mexican or you know anything else. Like it, it, it's definitely out there, and women too. When women being held back because of their gender, did that happen to D'Lo Brown? Maybe. I mean. You know, but it's like, well, then why did Mark Henry get pushed so much? Why did The Rock get pushed so much? I mean, like, who's to say? Who's to say what really is the reason why D'Lo Brown um, didn't get the push? I think, personally, it probably had something to do with him hurting draws. I know it wasn't intentional, but I think that slowed down the momentum just enough, and they could never recover from it. 
You know, and it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things that sometimes when a wrestler is, you know, he can be hot one minute and then he can be cold the next minute. It's all about momentum and it's all about if they can recover from it. I mean, you know, very few wrestlers recover from that. They recover, they, they, they don't recover from getting cold all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Like, you look at guys who have endured over the years. You look at guys like Kane, Mark Henry, Big Show, you know, Triple H even. You know, there's, there's been brief moments in their career where maybe they weren't as big as they once was. Or even now, you know, maybe the Big Show's time has passed, Kane's time has passed. Maybe they won't be in angles that were as big as they once were. But they're still around. They're still doing stuff because they're still able to contribute in some way. Or at least to still go out there and do something that helps them get over or stay over. You know, D'Lo Brown himself admitted that after that match... He did not feel confident with everything he did in, in the ring, and he, and he wrestled a long time after WWE. So did, did did he? Does that still carry with him today? You know what I mean? Is it just one of the things that maybe it was a part of it was him? Maybe he didn't feel comfortable doing certain things. Um, also, there's a lot of stories about D'Lo Brown um, refusing to change the D'Lo Brown gimmick. You know, that was his brand. He, you know, a lot of wrestlers talk about their brand. You know, Taz talks about his brand as Taz. You know, Undertaker, obviously, his brand as being, you know, the phenom and this and that. Um, but D'Lo Brown have always, has always stated that he was always very adamant as staying as D'Lo Brown. He didn't want to be anything else but D'Lo Brown. Maybe that had something to do with it. They're like, all right, well, you want to be D'Lo Brown? All right, then you're going to be D'Lo Brown. You know what? You're going to team with Chaz. How about that? <laughs> You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Look at Road Dog going for his uh, shake, rattle, and roll punch. Road Dog is another easy person to um, counter because he's always going for those stupid punches. And, and the slaps are very easy to read. Um, so, these handicap matches, you, you fight X Pac and Road Dog a lot in handicap matches. X Pac talk it, uh, taunting in the back while I'm giving it to uh, giving Road Dog a taste of his own medicine. And just waiting for Xbox to just come at me with the um, with a kick, but since he gets in grapple position, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna wrap this match up, give him the running Liger bomb, and call it a day. So that's my D'Lo Brown run. Um, I hope you found it interesting. The stuff I was talking about. Look, 7:25 was the time, July 25th. That's my birthday. D'Lo Brown won the title, July 25th. It's all connected. <laughs> Like, the more I play this game and the more I read about wrestlers and I start to notice how many things are connected, it's nuts. But, like, now my life is somehow getting connected to this. I don't know. Maybe it was destiny. But, um, yep. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, two more, just two more European title runs uh, until I, I complete it 100%. And then we will move on and do another 100% title run. But I'll do plenty more bonus No Mercy videos. And then hopefully I want to start doing my Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 video soon. So keep an eye out for that. But hey, go get the network. If you don't got it, leave a comment, subscribe, do all that jazz. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.